Hello and welcome on the IVP series powered by Camelot. Today, an interesting and quite long topic, which is, let's go with an overview of IVP demand. And before getting to the solutions, let's review quickly the process of demand planning. As you can see on this slide, the demand planning process proposed by SAP IVP is made of twofold. On one end, you have the demand planning, pretty conventional demand planning for the mid to long term horizon. And the demand sensing, which is more like focused on the short term. Globally speaking, the two ones added together gives the demand plan of the company. Just as a remark here, you see the demand sensing is a process which spins much faster than the demand planning on a daily to weekly basis, whereas the demand planning process spins by the weeks or the month. Concerning the demand planning process, it is mainly made of six steps as per best practice. So one, historic lensing, to elaborate the statistical proposition, the statistical forecast, which represents a reference value for the next step. Three, enrichment of this uh, demand planning by sales forecast, customer forecast, local demand, global demand, whatever marketing forecast, the many input that the company can think of, okay, enrichment, out of which also promotion possibly or contract management. Then continuing with the step four, the consensus, which means we want to elaborate a single number out of the statistical forecast and the many contributions which have been brought during the step number three here. Once the consensus is elaborated, it is time now to release this demand plan towards the, the, the downstream uh, systems like supply, like the ERP or like SNOP. Let's continue now with the demand sensing. Demand sensing is mostly made of Five steps. The first one is to capture the recent past, the sales by the days, even by the order level, in order to do what? To calculate so-called the landing, the landing point of this evolution, recent evolution. And then you want to what? compare this recent evolution versus the demand plan that you have elaborated last month, by the way. And you want to compare whether the, the demand, the, the, the actual demand is soon matching your forecast or is it going up or down and you need to do to, to take some actions. So this is, in fact, here on, on step four, you assess the different options that you have after the calculation of this landing, and then you validate these options in order to review for the short term the demand plan and pass it over to supply to and take actions actually in the operational systems. Now we go to the solution. What's happening from the solution perspective on the Fiori side? So we do many things on the Fiori side. We first configure the solutions and introduce the business rules into the, the solution. So SAP does not deliver a working demand planning solution, which is already running uh, in the company. No, you have to implement it and configure your business rules. Step one. Then you will have to define your cleansing strategy. You will have to define your, your forecast strategy. What I mean with forecast strategy, which forecast model, which forecast algorithm, and at which level do you want to calculate the forecast? Is it at the product, at the product and customer, at the product and customer region, or whatever family of product? It's very flexible. Then you will define the life cycle management. So how do you want to consider the phase in, phase out of product? So of course, step one in this list is made once, whereas the step two, three, four, five, and the others are repetitive topics, which happens every, every cycle, by the way. Also consider possibly the promotion. Depending the business, we call that promotion, event, so bad. And then also define what kind of forecast do you want to have? Is it a named forecast for the, the object you want to forecast, like product? And I want this forecast model for this product, OK? Or do I want to go with a clustered approach, which means I've got global definition of forecast by main traits of products and then the forecast is adapted to this group of traits and the product goes through the traits uh, according to the product life cycle management so at the beginning it's uh, and it's launched then it becomes mature and then it's end of uh, of life as a demo of this uh, demand planning capabilities i will use here the stm lab solution from Camelot, which is a pre-configured solution we deliver our customer at the start of project some of our customer and let me go to the demand planning elements. So here, the demand planner represents the, the, the Fury application concerning demand planning. There is not so many, okay? It's quite compact, but it's doing a lot. 
Okay. So let's go to the managed forecast model. So in managed forecast model, what do we manage in, uh, in demand planning? We manage the type of cleaning, then the type of statistics, and also the type of KPIs which are calculated during the, the statistical uh, calculation. As you see, I've created a few models here, which are either uh, completely dedicated to cleansing or to forecasting, and we can do, uh, we can do also both of them at the same time. Okay, so if I take, for instance, the, the, this model here, best, best fit Croston, so and I edit this forecast, we see that the forecast model is made of general information, pre-processing, where the pre-processing defines whether you want to do cleaning or not, and what kind of cleaning can we do? Substitute missing value, historical data coming from the ERP are void, empty, Therefore, you want to have uh, periods with a uh, value. You may say, I want to substitute with the average, uh, average actuals. Outlier correction, you have values which are flying over the, the average or, or dropping severely, so you want to correct them. So this is outlier correction. And promotion, sales lift elimination, you've got a promotion and you know that your historical actuals have been marked up by the promotion. You wish to, to do a deduction, uh, an easy deduction. This is the kind of pre-processing that we can do during the forecast calculation. Okay. Then from the forecast calculation itself, you can then sub-select uh, in this pre-process, in these forecasting steps, one to many forecast algorithms out of what you can see here. And here in this case, I have selected Croston and Croston TSB uh, model. Why not? And it forecast the model Croston as a number of parameters, whereas the other forecast model has also its own parameters. And because I've selected two, then I can say to the system, please choose the best out of the mean absolute deviation, MAPE, for instance. As the last step is post-processing of uh, for forecasting. And in this one, you will decide which forecast error, so-called KPIs, you want to calculate automatically every time you calculate a forecast. And not only that, but you can also store that in key figures in order to see the evolution of those different KPIs after uh, time after time. Let me also, from the demand planning perspective, uh, show you the managed forecast error calculation, which is a way to calculate advanced KPIs in demand planning. We definitely need this whenever we want to assess the quality of forecast, the quality of demand planning, and so on. So for those ones, you have to create kind of, uh, some, some profile, which tell the batch job what to calculate. Here I'm in one profile, which says I want to calculate MAD, MAPE, bias, and accuracy for the actual baseline published options. Assigned model means I want to say this forecast model goes with this product or this family or whatever group of object uh, goes with this one. Okay. Analyze promotion. I have promotions. I have declared promotion, and I wish to analyze the consequence of promotion versus the actuals, and also introduce that in the forecast. Manage product life cycle. I, I wish to create phase-in and phase-out profile so that a new product gets the historical value from a, a previous product, another product, uh, by doing a like modeling and with some options to determine the, the type of launch and the type of phasing, the landing for phased-out product. Then you have, as I said, manage forecast automation profile, which is the SAP standard proposition to have a forecast model which automatically uh, stick to the, 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 the life cycle uh, state of the product. Say it is in launch. So in launch mode, this is probably something which will be hectic as a product. Therefore, you need a very reactive forecast model. Whereas when it's mature, you can use a smoother uh, forecast model and so on and so forth. That's what you do with these options here. And this is about the theory part, the part of the demand planning process in SAP IBP. Okay. Run the forecast, I already mentioned that while we were on the, on the demo in the system. So segmentation means you need sometimes to segment and determine whether the product is intermittent. It's a, it's a trendy product. It is a, an important product. It's a volatile product. So by means of segmentation application in, in theory, you can determine this and it's very, uh, very flexible for you to define your own segmentation if, uh, if so. Then you can call uh, the forecast by running a, a clustered one, an automated one, as I said, or assign base, mean 
you need to you, you want to assign a forecast model with an explicit uh, object. Let's see that in the system. So here we are in Excel uh, from the demand planning perspective, as you can see here in, in Excel, in our proposition, SCM Lab solution, there is a demand planning section which propose you the, the steps which I discussed uh, in the slide. So historic lensing, baseline forecast calculation, demand plan enrichment and validation, then calculate KPIs and later prepare SNOP, SOP review uh, with regards to demand planning. Historical cleansing, it's a layout, special layout, which is calculated, which is designed to cover the demand cleansing, where from the actuals, as you can see here, then and the promotion actuals, you can also see the actuals from your minus one, two, three. It's always important to, to challenge the, the numbers, okay? They are not all represented in the graphics, so that's your, that's your pull, you can say, I want more and then you add to the graphics, okay? Then you have historical cleansing, which is the result of the historic cleansing that we've seen in Fury, when you run a forecast, which I can also run here. I mean, I run a forecast, but only with cleansing options, for instance. This is here, for instance, cleansing the missing, the outlier, and so on. And when I do that, the system calculates an automatic historic cleansing, and possibly with some change, like we can see here, the, there was a change, during the last calculation for this customer and for the product and, uh, and that customer. Then after that, you are left the capabilities with uh, to, to update manually some, some further uh, values versus the automatic correction. And then you can also define a reference history in terms of product lifecycle management, where you want to inherit an historical data from another product Okay, in order to later calculate your forecast. So it's possibility here that we propose. All this becomes the so-called total corrected history, which becomes the entry for statistical forecast. Let's go to the statistical forecast. Then we've got a special template for that, baseline, which we call baseline forecast. Here it is. So the baseline forecast is made, starts with the total corrected history, and then, also representing the actuals from the year minus one in order to compare if the forecast is quite aligned with last year or is it completely different? Of course, if it's a launch product, it will be completely different. But for a mature product, it's always good to challenge and to, yes, to, to calibrate with the, the last year. Then you have your statistical forecast result of the last forecast. Say for instance, I want to run a forecast base fit. It's currently running and will override the statistical forecast quantity line here for each of the combination I've shown here. By the way, in simulation, like I'm doing here, the simulation automatically adapts the planning level for the statistical to what is displayed. So therefore, to what is designed in the template. So here is the new results. We see the values have changed, uh, 171 and so on and so forth, according to this uh, last forecast model that I've uh, selected from simulation. As I was using simulation, nothing is yet saved on the database. I need to save data if I want this to become uh, the, the new reference. By the way, you see in our proposition, we have always a key figure which represents the, the key figure in preparation before we validate into the baseline published here in our, in our case, meaning that when the demand planner is okay, then it, it will run the copy jobs in order to say, okay, the prep becomes the new reality. Okay, so that decouples the, the different topics, the different steps in the, in the process that we have seen, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? That decouples the, the propagation of results uh, when, whenever one is doing simulation, for instance, I don't want to disturb any, anybody, anybody else uh, down one in the process. And then we go now, demand planning enrichment, which one is showing the many forecasts that are currently Define in the system the baseline which have, we have just seen during statistical forecast. And then if you have a product with a customer which is relevant for customer forecast, you receive forecast from the customer, please load here your, your customer forecast. If you have a sales review with sales force on a regular basis and they provide you a sales forecast, please do. This is here. If you organize more like in a local demand plan and global demand plan, Please do. And by the way, if you don't need them, you just hide the key figure and uh, it becomes relevant to your uh, design. And then on top of that, you have contract quantity. Contract, it's more like sales order if you prefer. Okay. 
and, and promotion forecast, which are the, the markup on top of whatever uh, forecast uh, you would have done out of statistics, customer sales, local, global. Okay. This becomes a so-called CDP, Consensus Demand Plan Moderation, where, in fact, you can apply a life cycle factor, which will dampen or not the quantity and show you the result in CDP in prep until the time you say, now my CDP, my consensus demand plan is ready to be passed over, I'm finished, and therefore you would publish your CDP. You see as well that we have cannibalization impact where, in fact, you can define promotion on some products which have a consequence negative or positive consequence on other products, and you would use the cannibalization impact to support this part. Now we are done with the forecast. So we have elaborated the CDP, so consensus demand plan, and even published it. So now it's time to transfer that to the downstream processes like supply, like ERP, like SNOP. This is what you do with a copy operator, which are prepared here in order to copy that into the different further down systems like publish CDP, publish to supply, publish to order based planning, for instance. This is this represents, in fact, the linkage between the different propositions from SAP in terms of planning. Tactical planning in type series, order-based planning, operational planning in order-based planning, and uh, even further in NS4. This is it. We are finished with the overview of demand planning process. Of course, it was compact and probably a bit quick. There will be many, many new episodes to come where I will take the time to go in each independent <coughs> point and show you the, the details of those different points. Hope you appreciate it. If you like it, think of liking it or comment or repost. So I'm happy if you repost and uh, see you soon.